So we will save a lot of things when we build together. So I added one more website called as the debate website. We'll talk more about this website soon. So let's create one more folder called as debate. <clears throat> if you have also dream of some website, you can also mention we will build that also together. So Tony, do you have anything in mind to build? Since we are here, we can build together all the websites, which you know it will save our time if we build together. Kate, do you have anything in mind which you want to build for your personal satisfaction? Okay, if you remind something, just let me know. Otherwise, uh, here I will create one more layout debate layout dot js. So you want hotel room booking system, okay? So let's uh, let's think what you try to do. So we want to book, book hotel room booking system, okay? So if I extend this one, I will name it as a booking system. And in that booking system, it will be one will be the hotel room booking system. And if we if we extend this hotel room booking system, we can also extend to uh, we can also extend to maybe I have a parlor, for example. In that also, I need booking system. So my parlor booking system, or if I am making this tutor website, so tutor also has to make a booking system or all of these wants to make a booking system. So a generic booking system. So we can, we can build a lot of booking system together. So maybe we can start with this and then we will use that same code in other places also so it's good let's make that also a new folder i will name it as booking system booking only booking let's create the layout booking layout dot this okay station booking yeah so a generic one we we have a lot of booking system once we build one we can use it for other purpose also. True, patient booking system and all, right. So maybe if you have uh, some, you know, design in the mind that first page will be look like this, second page look like this, third page look like this, then put it in some text or word document and just uh, share with us so that I can be clear what you are thinking in your mind. And on top of it, I will do some changes and we will build that also. Okay, so let's build the kind of thing. These are the websites. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten websites. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so we have uh, ten kind of layouts, ten kind of websites we will be building right now. So now let's start the things. So now I have so many websites. How should I maintain that uh, this website should be called or this website should be called? Because I am putting everything in this one folder. So we have to solve this problem. So we have to solve this problem. How we should be handling all these things means if i want to use buy sale website i should call this one so there are two ways to go i will show you both the way and then we will choose one of the way 
any way can be fine two ways let's do the method one so i have app.js so i will take app.js and i will copy it and i will save it as maybe i can say app i flix.js So it is app myflix.js. Here I'm making myflix.js. And uh, similarly, I will make 10 copies of app myflix, app cleaning, app handyman, app massage, app. I will create 10 copies. Right now, I'm creating two copies only for just uh, demo purpose. And later on, I will create 10 copies. So let's say online RX. So I can rename this one app.js again to app online rx.js. So I will create app online rx.js. And what I will do, let's say if I'm building, let's say if I'm building app myflix instead of calling app i will call app myflix and then whole website will be whole website will be app myflix but tomorrow let's say i i am building some website online i will for the time being i will not use myflix i will use app online rx now my whole website will be online rx so if i have 10 websites i will change the index.js to app online rx and i will build run npm build and then i will upload the files to this website online rx and then after i'm done with this one i will change it to myflix and i will build the files and i will upload it to different folder called as myflix.info so I will be building 10 times for each one. And then I will be, uh, based on the thing, we will be uploading to that project server. So this is one of the method which we can do. Another method is I will use app only. So I will go into the app and I will do some changes so that I can use another method. So this is a method where we don't change the index.js file. It will call only app and based on the domain name, we will write some code here. And based on that domain name, we will change it to myflix or cleaning or whatever we want to do. We will do that one. So that is uh, what we will do. Now I will show you how to do the method two. So in the method two, I will do import. I will import the layout. I will import my text layout from my text.js from layouts. My text.js. So this is the one layout I imported it. And then I will import a second layout that is a online rx.js. And now here, I will create one variable, for example, constant uh, layout, for example, layout, I will say layout equal to null, uh, or I will use let, not constant, let, so that I can change it. And then I will put the constant site equal to whatever site I want to do. For example, I will say my flick dot info right is my flix dot info and here i will use here i will use if condition if right is equal to equal to flix dot info and i will call layout as my flix layout 
and I'll say else if right is equal to for example online rx but info I will make the layout equal to online rx layout and I will copy this and I'll put it here as a variable this layout will be either this or it will be this and I will put that layout here. So let's fix this index.js. Let's see what is the error is coming. I have layout, then I have site. Then I check site and then I check. Let's put this uh, it's, uh, So I have to default. This app is final. Okay, let's go to my fix layout. So we need to build some component here, otherwise it's giving error. So once I say component, just copy the code which I gave you yesterday, and then I will change it to name which I want. And I'll copy this code and I will put it inside the online RX, and I'll change the name. this one hmm. then so I'm getting my flex layout because I put site equal to my flex dot info let's say if I change it to online rx dot info then you will see it is changed to online rx dot layout so this site will actually come from the domain name if this domain name right now I don't have domain everything is going through local host but when we will build our real website, it has some domain name. So based on the domain name, I can switch the layout. So I don't need to change the index file again and again, which I was doing in the method one. I was changing the app to app myflix or app online rx, and I was committing it. With this method, I don't have to work again and again. I will be doing this one time, and my whole website will be ready. And based on the domain, I will be able to switch this part or I will be able to switch this part. So which one is better? Previous one where I have to do again and again build or this one where I have to do build only once and based on the domain name, I will be able to show it. Which one is better? Second one, right? The one where we do only once. So that one is better. But tomorrow, if we get little performance problem, I, I don't think there will be performance problem. But uh, uh, since we are putting everything in one file, I feel that uh, we, we have to check the size. How much is the size of the final output? If the size goes too big in this one and the size goes less in this one, then I will prefer method one. But right now, I feel that uh, method two is better, completely better. So we'll go with the method two and later on we will see the size of the file. And we'll see which one has more file size, then we will shift. We, we should have using small file size, we should not be using large file size. So that we will check how after we are done, we will see which one has file size, but then we have to only do switching of method one to method two or method two to method one. Right now we will go with this method.
So right now I'm putting only the two one and we will be adding all the 10 as soon as we move forward in our course. So now we are done with the layout part that if I have the online RX layout, the whole looks will be different. And if I have the MyFlix one, whole looks will be different. And whole our functionality will be different. So this page will only be for this ID defining which website I want to go. Buy sale, cleaning, handyman, whatever I want to go, I can go with this uh, in the layout. I will put here in this app file. So now, have you created all these folders yesterday or uh, I did not commit it yesterday. Uh, I forgot to commit, but uh, have you watched the video and created the folder or you have to create the folder now? Okay, folder creation is done. now. Let's do this index will not change because it has app. We will be not changing. Just put the app.js like this, uh, which I created to so use this app.js. And in the MyFlex layout and online RX layout, just create a normal component, which I gave you code yesterday. I don't have to paste it again and just change it to online RX layout or MyFlex layout. And in this one, I give you the code for app dot this Okay. okay. So now we are done with the layout and after this class you should test it whether you're getting any errors or bugs or you're not getting any errors. Now we will be using our auth system, which we build in library, and we will be using this in all our websites. So I will switch back to our auth for some time because we have to finish that auth before I really use it. So let's uh, go to the auth for a few seconds.
So let's finish one part in the auth and then we'll come back to this project again. Because I checked the documentation to update the display name and photo URL. So we will finish that part and then we'll come back to here. Okay, wait for some time. Let me finish the part and then I will come back to you. Uh, because I need five ten minutes to finish this part. So let's go to our auth system now again. I will go to my library and I will go to the modules auth one and I will go to the email register. So in email register, we are taking email password, confirm password. Let's take few more fields. Let's take the display name from the user. And this will be the text one. And I will say enter display name. And here I will create some display name as a state variable. And I will update the display name with the e dot target dot value. And I will also create another field that is called the photo URL. So I will say enter your photo image URL it will be also text and I will name it as photo URL. And let's create those two state variables. One is the display name. Let's make every field as a compulsory. I need all the field styles to be compulsory fields. And then I will create one more variable here. And here I will check uh, other two variables also. So I will say if display name is not there, there's a please fill display name. And if photo URL is not there, please put photo image URL. So I take all the fields as a compulsory and I will pass these two values in my function display name and the photo URL. And that here I will pass two more fields called as display name and photo URL. And in the function, this is a register function. This is the register one. So when I call the action email register, I need to call, put these two name also. And in the object, I will put display name and the photo URL. So object will have all the four fields and this all four fields will go inside the function Firebase login and inside the Firebase login that is this one email register 
here we have to write some code which will update the display name so what is the code we have to write here is what we have to write so uh, i will do the console.log of user also and it has one of the function it has is this send verification email another function it has is user dot update profile and update profile will take two parameters in a json format one will be the display name and that will be nothing but additional params dot display name and second parameter will be photo url and it will be nothing but what i passed which is this one so i passed in the small letter and it is here in the capital letter so just make sure you should put whatever you are passing you should be here and whatever firebase is taking it is here like this and then there will be like this there is a dot then so i will copy this then part but here i'm not getting any data so in the then Uh, in the then I will say console dot log user is user. I will I will call user again to see what's happening in the user. Let's see if I get something data or not. So let's check if we are getting data or not. So this will be the user one. This is the user two. So whenever I call the register, it will go and send the email verification and then it will update the profile with the display name and photo URL. And then I will get some confirmation console statement and then I'll see how to deal with this too. Let's check it now. So in the line 112 display name is not defined. So in the line number 112. Uh, so we after I return it, okay. Line number 112 in the email register. Let's go to the email register. Auth email register 112. Okay, I need to get this here also. And let's see now. So this is my registration page. Let's put submit. I need email. I will put x1 at mkgalaxy.com. Password is password. Password. If I submit now, it's saying display name. The display name I'll say let me open the console.log also. So I will say display name is mango and I need the image. I will put some image here. I'll put my image. So let me put this image. And I'll click submit. So once I click submit, this is something I'm getting user one. This is I'm getting user two. Data is coming null. We don't need the data. If I open user one, uh, since since it is dynamic value, so even though we wrote the user one before we update the profile, but it got updated here also. You see. Display name is here updated. Email is also updated. If I go to the provider one, let's see in the provider data in the zero, I get display name and I get the photo URL. 
so now we are getting this information here and i can also i am not getting here let's see what, what is happening so if i let's try to log in with this one and see if i'm getting this display name or not Once I'm logged in, I'm getting email login fulfilled. Let's see on the auth reducer. Now I'm getting display name, but uh, I was not getting this when I was registering. So let's see where is the problem. So I'll try to register again, and I'm not able to call this again. So some problem is there also. I'm not able to. Okay, so there is some error. Okay, let's try again. So let's do register again, X2. There is some bug, I think. I'm not able to change. I will fix that soon. Let's try to put the password, password, X2. Let's put the image URL same. Once I click submit, I'm able to go to email register. Then I'm going to the logged in. Then it's going to email register fulfilled. And since this logged in is called before email register fulfilled, so I'm not getting it actually. I'm not getting this name because this email register fulfilled is called before, after logged in. The logged in needs the information of uh, if I refresh now it will come but we are getting this problem so now if I refresh I'm getting the value but not when I do email registration let's see how to fix that one so here I am calling this create email it is created it goes here and once it is created here it actually it actually call the logged in part so we are not getting the information again so maybe we can do like this after we after we update the profile after we update the profile we can redirect user to another page and then it will be so it's uh, so when we are here let's try to redirect hard code redirect to another page so here i will redirect to refresh the page here i will i can say maybe Maybe I can maybe I can sign out the user and ask user to log in again. So I can sign out the user. So how to sign out the user by calling this action dot sign out. So let's do this thing. This thing is much better. I will sign out and then I will redirect user to the login page. And what is the login page? Login page is this one. So to redirect to the login page, we will use or we, we can use hard-coded Windows function, normal JavaScript function, window.location.hreference equal to login. So this will sign out the user and it will send the user to the login page. So when you're registering, 
we do everything and after the profile is updated we ask the user to we sign out the user and we ask the user to log in again or if we don't want to sign out i can just redirect user to the main page then also it is fine so it will be he don't have to put the login and password again but he will be redirecting to another page and then we will be able to see that so for example now if i go to email registration i will create another one Let's put this one. Once I click submit, everything will be done and I will be redirected to the main home page. Now, if I see, I will be able to see the name because page is refreshed. Because after email registration, we need to refresh the page because Firebase does not know user is logged in because we are changing the display name after the user is logged in. So we need to refresh the page to see this display name. So this completes our, you know, auth part kind of thing. Though I don't have forgot password, change password, which we will do in future class. Now tomorrow, from tomorrow, we did this MyFlix layout and online RX layout. I will be asking you to code also. Though I know I, I'm giving you the code like this, I'm giving this code and I'm copying and pasting the chat and you are doing that. But uh, that will not uh, make you perfect. So to make you perfect, what I will do, I will give you some functionality, for example. So for example, I will say, we need to build one form. And I will give you the mouse control on my computer. So you have to come into my computer and you have to type here the code. So you have to type here to make the functionality done, which I will ask you. So this way, you will also learn what's happening because if I do everything, it looks very simple. But when you go to the field, it is very difficult. So I want you to code and I will look at it and if you get any problem, then I will come back and I will fix it. So few few code I will be doing and few code I will ask you to come on my computer and do it. So for example, I will ask you to change it to some different name and I will give you the mouse control. So you have to change it to this two, two, whatever you want to do. So this way I will see how much you remember, how much you know. Now I feel whenever I'm explaining, I feel that you are under understanding perfectly well. But you know, that will not happen when you create a new website or when you do your own work, you will be in the lost situation. So you have to practice on my computer and whatever functionality I will give you, you have to build that functionality. And if anything is bigger, I will give you the page. I will open some page and I will ask you to copy paste from this page. So for example, if I want to, if I want you to build this part of the code on our website, so I will ask you to go to the HTML, copy the whole content, and then paste it here. So I will help you to do copy paste, but you have to take the initiative. You have to go and copy there, and then I will help you to paste it here, and then we will fix it. So. From tomorrow, I will be doing ma maximum thing, but in between, I will ask you to do this kind of coding to know whether you have understood the things or not. Is that clear? So that's it for today.